You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hogger Libby Podcast. This is episode number 86 of Essentially Indiana's Favorite Podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. I'm joined today by co-hosts Cade Coger and what's that guy down at the end's name? Pace Cade. Smo- Smoky Delicious. Smoky Delicious. <laughs> and of course, co-host Dakota Davis. Today's episode is uh, going to be featuring us talking about the election, what it was like here at election night. We're going to go over uh, the... Um, the results, what uh, what the results could mean for the state of Indiana and in particular Henry County. Um, we will also be talking about uh, the plagues to our republic, which are voter turnout as well as straight ticket voting. And then we were we will be covering some uh, local news topics. So stay tuned until the end to hear those. All right. So this show is about our lives in rural Indiana. As always, we promise our episodes are going to be a fun and an easy listen. Uh, and yeah, so we're covering the news, and it turns out I'm the news this week. Weird. Yeah. Weird how that What's up out. with that? Look at the number of people watching live, man. 28 on we're the live good. before we even get started. The screen on that laptop is very nice. It makes us look good. It is. It's very uh, very premium. I like it. It's a freebie. A freebie, huh? It's a Do freebie. I need to keep my face like this? Uh, You know, it's whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever you think of it. Like this. It's a high-definition camera, Chase. Oh, boy. I should have put my makeup on. So, right. uh, yeah, so we, we did a surprise uh, election results show because we just got bored. I literally shared a status on uh, on Tuesday night. We were sitting around here at about 11 o'clock, and next thing I knew, Dakota started turning the cameras on, and we had we did a live show. We didn't promote yeah, it. We didn't tell people we were going to. We thought there was going to be a huge crowd here. And the, Early in the night, there were probably 50 people in this building. In yeah, this, this building. place is packed. It was yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, so I turned the cameras on because uh, Josie Thompson um, – Danny's significant Danny's other. Danny's significant other, yes. She she came up to me and she she said, Jeremiah wants to go live. And I was, <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, oh, okay. So I started setting things up and you were like, are we going live? I said, uh, yeah, you're the one that wants to. And Josie goes, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so she, she talked us into it. Not five minutes before that, her, her three-year-old was running around here yes, playing, playing with our soundboard. And he, he and kept trying to. different. He kept trying to sounds, play with it. It sounds better today now than it ever does. Yeah. I, I, we need, apparently, yeah. we needed his gilded touch. We need Will here to to run the audio side for us. He can be our young Jamie. <laughs> I had, I've had the uh, post-election cold that comes on, uh, so I felt like death this morning. So I, I'm, I'm happy that I have a voice at all. I, I literally like whispered out to Sarah this morning. I'm waking up. This is how much the podcast is on my mind. I'm like, I hope I have a voice for the show tonight. <laughs> that's all, And that's all I could muster. A voice, yeah. You said uh, we we were in a group chat with Chris Spengler, and you said you said the show must go on. I took three emergencies. <laughs> yeah, my entire day, I've, I've I've had like three emergency packets and like eight ibuprofen, and I've been <laughs> pounding the waters. Let uh, me tell you guys, but, but I made it. I'm here. Henry County sucks. Okay, Jared, you said, "Hey, come to the party. It'll be fun. We'll stay a little late." When you said late. I was thinking nine, nine thirty, ten at the most. Yeah, I was not expecting. We 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 did the primary election show. Yeah, uh, Audrey had the whiteboard. Dakota and I were sitting there, and we I think you were you, we sent I you was, to the headquarters. I was at, at the Remo, Republican Party, and uh, and that one took a little Where while you for belong, results to come you in. Rhino, <laughs> I'm a I'm the boomer, like correspondent, correspondent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm the boomer golden child. They love me. Are you our, uh, yeah. I would have been in high school. I can't wait until we make it big time and Chase is doing our, our White House briefs. Chase <laughs> is our Jim Acosta and he's karate chopping arms. <laughs> so we had, uh, we, we, we had the, uh, the, the election night coverage back in May or the primary coverage, not election. Remember that it was the primary. Um, we, we thought maybe they would come a little late and they had one place that didn't report and it took forever to get numbers in. We were sitting around here watching California was closed, and we didn't have Henry County results. We sent uh, Zach Lee and uh, I think Danny Morrill and John Phillips went up to the courthouse at one point, 
and uh, Chris Guffey, he wanted to work behind the scenes. I mean, we made him work behind the scenes. He probably we have spent... been making him work behind the scenes. That's a big shout out to Chris Guffey. He's yeah. been doing everything for us. If he if he keeps playing the card right, we'll let him into the senior staff chat on the, on the show <laughs> that actually plans everything. Uh, not like that freeloading Chase who just barely knows. Are we still recording tonight? He, he messages that at 630. Is this still a thing? <laughs> hey, I show up. I'm yeah. dependable. You're here. You're here. Uh, so yeah, we, we sent Chris Guffey down there and he, instead of getting to hang out with us and have the party, uh, he just basically spent time at the courthouse just standing there watching them count votes. Yep. Uh, and, and by 11 o'clock, 1130, I don't know if they paid a dollar a page or not, but we actually got election results <laughs> yeah, uh, was... from the, from the courthouse. And, uh, we've got, we don't have the precinct by precincts yet. Uh, those will be published later and we'll have them, but, uh, yeah, statewide, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit here. Uh, yeah, we'll some things a... we talked about and watched and, and covered. We had state U.S. Senate candidates on back in the primary. Yeah, but we had, yeah, we covered the U.S. Senate uh, Republican primary pretty heavily. I went to the, the debate there, and as we all know, Mike Braun uh, won the primary, and he came out ahead uh, as well uh, by about forty five hundred votes, is that your Pokemon Go speaking at you? No, it's uh, so Chad. Chad Malicote just messaged me. He said he, uh, that uh, I was heard on WIBC last night. And I said, "What? What are show?" Apparently, on Hammer and Nigel, our buddy Rob Kendall was on, and he said that uh, my third party race, I should be the model. Uh, the model of them should be this guy out in Henry County named Jeremiah Morrill. So. There we go. I, I missed it. So I, I have to go back and listen to the podcast. But Rob's <laughs> throwing us some love, man. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Mike Braun ended up winning uh, winning the U.S. Senate race. He won by about 4,500 votes here in Henry County. Uh, or Yeah, 4,500 votes here in Henry County only. Uh, Henry County voters picked him uh, 61% of the time. So Yeah. So we, had, had, we had nine people write in a candidate for... I think they all wrote in Christy Senate. Avery. Spangle said that if you don't like somebody, <laughs> you're supposed to write in Christy Avery. So we can only assume that Christy Avery, uh, Category 5 super fan of the Ball of Liberty, was, uh, was the write-in. Uh, Lucy Brenton wound up with a 4% in that race. Uh, statewide, Tara Klutz has been reelected as the auditor. Uh, she, uh, she won 56 to 40 over Jocelyn Whitaker and John Schick, uh, the Libertarian, came in with 3%. Uh, big race for the Libertarians, the Indiana Secretary of State race. That's our ballot access race. Yep. Uh, for us to exist as a party, we have to have at least 2% of the vote. We cleared that. Mark Rutherford got 3%. We were hoping for more, but we were still alive for four more years. Uh, Connie Lawson was reelected 57% to 40% over Jim Harper, the Democrat. The, the big thing about that race with uh, Connie Lawson being elected in 18 months, she is going to have to resign uh, as Secretary of State because of her term limits. Yeah, the, um, the county Republicans, uh, their Facebook page shared something saying, you know, uh, celebrating that Connie's there. And I was just wondering if they've announced who's going to replace her already <laughs> since she's constitutionally term limited. Yeah, she is. Uh, and it's kind of it seems kind of ironic to me that she would be that she would still run. The person who's in charge of elections for the state would still run for a race where she can't fall out. She can't fulfill her her full term. Uh, so with Connie Lawson, the the Republican governor, which uh, will be Eric Holcomb, uh, will be picking her replacement, not the voters. So I, I think that that is a pretty significant to point out. But yeah, like you said, uh, you know, we are still on the ballot. So that's that's always great news. That's right. So uh, on the county level, uh, few, the, the races that we watched, obviously, were the county council races. Peg Steffendell did win big in that race, uh, 70 percent or so. Uh, she won that one. And then uh, last Friday night, we had the special show between uh, Chad Malicote and Robin Reno Fleming. Uh, and Chad picked up the win. Uh, that was probably the biggest upset of the night or the biggest surprise, the biggest change Jer. of the night. Did you? I, I did. Yeah. You you live in that district. I told you, Jerry. I was like, you know what? Chad's got this in the bag. Do you? And you're like, I don't know. I don't I, know. I said, man, it's a tight race. It's a tight race. We expected it to be tight. And it was only a couple hundred votes. Uh, but I think the story of the night or the surprise of the night for us uh, was the absolute turnout for the straight ticket voting. Uh, that yeah. was that was kind of the, the the surprise I had. You know, when I did the analysis of my race ahead of time, knowing it was an open seat, you know, I, I ran four years ago and that was kind of a baseline for me. And I got 17 percent of the vote. And I said, OK, if I got 17 percent now, that's 400 and some votes. If I can double that a little bit more in a three way race, that gets me to 34 percent. You kick in a couple more votes, 36, 37, 38, somewhere in there I could win. That was the logic that I had going into the race. Uh, the county went out and bought the new election equipment. 
Yeah. Uh, spent a little over seven hundred thousand dollars on one hundred and ninety new machines, and the the straight ticket voting with this new equipment it jumped up seventeen uh, percent. Uh, which I was not expecting. Uh, but if you looked at the straight ticket voters from uh, from 2014, 37% of the people that voted took a straight ticket ballot. 2016, it was 39%. In 2018, it jumped all the way to 56%. So more and, than and it, more than half. It's important to point out as well that uh, during presidential election years, straight ticket voting is usually a lot higher. Uh, so... It only jumped 2% between 2014 and 2016, so Henry County is kind of an anomaly in that way. But still, the the numbers make sense to me to point out that, yeah, 17% is not just a coincidence, especially in a midterm year. So we had the, this new equipment, and uh, Cade, you're here. You, you voted mm-hmm. on Election Day. Sure. Uh, and I assume you didn't do a straight ticket or didn't try to do a straight ticket or you undervoted some races. Mm-hmm. Tell us what it was like using the equipment. Um, it's at first, I mean, it was like any other year or pre- previous years in 2016. Um, <clears throat> when you go to, it asked the first question, which was the state question, the referendum. That was the, yeah, the, whether or not they were going to amend the constitution yeah. for uh, some balanced budget thing. Yeah. Um, and then it went to what straight party you wanted to select. And of course to split the ticket, um, to go through and look at all your options instead of picking straight ticket. Uh, you had to hit next, and then when you hit next, it would prompt you like you made a mistake, and it said that the the ballot wasn't complete. And you have to hit next again for it to go to go to away. The next screen, or right, or, it would, or you could go back and could, make a selection, or you could go back and make a straight party selection. And right, you could go back and amend your ballot. Yeah, before you submitted it. Yeah, um, and we started to hear that from the early voters, people saying, you know, this is a little confusing. And I, I saw it myself. I should have taken a picture because yeah. we've been we've been kind of struggling trying to find the language it, or the, it or the like vision. It seemed like the entire time that I was in there voting, I, it took me a little longer, of course, because I went through all my options. Yeah. But everyone around me was asking the same questions or stopping and asking an attendant, you know, how to go straight ticket or how do I go back and do this or does this screen mean that I made a mistake? Am I still going to be able to vote? You know, everybody yeah. seemed and really confused on what was going on. So we asked, um, we asked on our Facebook page if anybody had any stories and without even prompting um i put out a, a status on the boss Talk of liberty facebook page that said did you vote during the midterms if so we want to hear your story without prompting we got a ton of comments um a ton of direct messages from people who were saying that they found the straight ticket very confusing and they had trouble uh, quite a few people said that they voted straight ticket because they they thought that their vote wouldn't get counted if they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's it's not uncommon, and I definitely think that that contributed to it because I mean, think of three people asking just while you're there to vote. How many people don't? They're just very agreeable people, so they don't want to bring something up or ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, how many of those people just uh, went ahead and went, oh, I guess I have to click one of these, and they click Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, whatever, and just went on, you know. it. And then considering the, the turnout that we had this year, it seemed like there were a lot of new voters this year that had never voted before. Right. And even though it, it really is, it's an easy task, it was just a very confusing one, it seemed like this year. And I think it was really intimidating to a lot of new voters, especially. Oh, incredibly. And you're and the first time you vote, it's always you're always very nervous. Yeah. And it, it's very intimidating. You stand in this long line of people. Uh no one wants to talk to each other uh because of what you're there to do. <laughs> and I'm and, here to overthrow the government. I need some peace and quiet. <laughs> I don't need you looking over my shoulder. And, I'm here to revolt. And then you and then you go um, into the ballot box and and it, it can be very intimidating from the start and then you throw confusion on top of that and it's it's not a good recipe for success yep. for individuals or government. What was your experience like, Chase? It was great, Jer. I woke up that morning and I was like, oh, I got to rush to get to work, and then I rushed to work. And then I got off and I was like, oh man, I got five minutes to make this happen. And I was like, eh, I'll do it four years from now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, the guy, why didn't you just the stop guy in who I was on the way home? Listen, the guy who I wanted to win, I knew he had it in the bag. I was like, doesn't need my vote. He's going to win. The guy you wanted to win was, uh, was, was Mike Braun. No, 
I didn't look into that race at all. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. Did you, did you need more information? Needed more commercials? Yeah, I didn't want to vote in a race I wasn't informed on. I feel like that's a big problem with politics. A lot of people aren't informed. Do you know how many friends I had post on Facebook that day? That said, ooh, vote Republican, vote red. But they couldn't name one person in that local election. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You were more educated on the local ones than you were on the state Yeah, line. and I didn't even vote. Well, that was, that was uh, the other big issue with straight ticket voting is a lot of people get caught up in what they see on the nightly news or mm-hmm. going around their Facebook and Twitter feeds, and they go in there and they think, Wow, look at how the Dems screwed over Kavanaugh. Yeah. I can't let that happen again. So they they let the national tribalism exactly you know, put a lens on and, local politics. And so let's, the, the evidence that we have with that is uh, the fact of is Trump's coattails, yeah. right? Because Trump can go every single race that Trump went to the state and campaigned for that person, they won that race. That is that's direct evidence that we have of national coattails in, in local and statewide offices. Mm-hmm. So uh, wrapping up this straight ticket voting thing, and I, I, listen, it, my strategy wasn't counting on, I wasn't counting on the massive voter turnout. It, the numbers I had, I had more votes this time than I did in 2014. Uh, yeah. But my percentage went down because the turnout was so much higher. And then, uh, the, like I said, the straight ticket voting did go up. I was expecting to have a very legitimate chance to win, landing at 12%. Man, that was that was not what I was expecting. Uh, but at the same time, you look at the results across the state, it was, you know, it, and across the country for libertarians, we were very competitive. Uh, but when when we look at the straight ticket numbers, and it's not making excuses, it's just the reality. Fifty six percent of all people this time took a straight ticket ballot. Seventy percent of the voters that did that selected that Republican button, mm-hmm. which meant that generic Republican in any race had thirty nine percent of the vote. In right. a three way race, that's a winning number before you start. Oh yeah. Uh, you Which, know, so that and that's just the that's the reality of it. So, I, you know, if you don't like the straight ticket voting and you think that we need to be looking to individuals, you have to realize that Indiana is one of only eight states, eight states that have straight ticket voting. Oh, it's yeah. eight, eight. I thought Indiana, it was nine. Alabama, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Texas, and Utah. That's wow. it. Weird. That's it. And Texas is getting rid of it in 2020. So it'll be seven states by 2020. What is that? What is Indiana? Indiana uh, got rid of the straight ticket voting in the at-large races okay, uh, yeah. in 2016. So oh, I didn't realize it was that new. Yeah, it just happened. So the 2016 race that uh, Jesse Riddle was on the ballot for in the Henry right, County Council, yeah. that was the first time that a straight ticket vote didn't count in a county council race. Which means you actually have to go and select so it, it. Yeah. So yeah. for 2020, that is the best opportunity for third-party candidates is in the at-large races, which are the council races. Right. Uh, so just looking at that, obviously, if you're a third-party candidate, whether you're a Green or you're an Independent or you're a Libertarian, mm-hmm. the county council races are the ones to target because they're at-large in Indiana. Uh, but yeah, we are, I mean, we are in the, you know, this is like this is almost like a cold beer on Sunday issue in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, or Sunday sales of alcohol. We are that much of an outlier. One thing I would like to point out that I've seen some confusion on when people talk about maybe getting rid of straight ticket voting, it's not that anyone wants to get rid of your ability to vote all for one party. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No one. Some people are thinking that they're getting that confused. It's you, if you want to, you still go through and you, know, you can make mark any all choices you want to. You want. It's it's still up to you. There's no control as it's, far as that goes that anyone's trying to get. We're in an information age now, yeah. right? So you've got information on all these candidates, and you still got a party label next to it. Yeah. Um. But we're now in this digital box where the straight ticket voting is going up. In addition to, you know, yeah, it, the, this tribalism that's going on, we're doing it electronically. So the machine is asking you to go back and act like you made an error. Oh, you forgot something. Go mm-hmm. back and p- select fill in a box. When we had paper ballots, you could check that box if you wanted to, or you could just skip it. Right. There wasn't positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement to go back and say, hey, you meant to do that. Right. And I don't even remember this in the 2016 election. Uh, the box was there, but it wasn't, it was not the, f- the entire screen. Jumping at you, like yeah, this. it's a it's a pop up, and it's got like yeah. the little exclamation mark hazard sign, and and it's like uh, you're leaving this section blank or whatever, and and you're like, oh crap, you know, and it even threw me off. I went back and I was like, wait, no, this is a straight ticket screen. Like, I, yeah, I don't want this. So, so, so our numbers, we wound up at we'll call it twelve percent. It was like eleven point nine seven. We'll say twelve percent because you know we we can round up. L- at least I can have that right. Yeah, All I'll right. let you have it. I'll so, let it slide. So a comparison, uh, Gary Johnson was about 15% as a the libertarian candidate for uh, U.S. Senate in New Mexico. He was obviously the libertarian candidate for president the last two cycles, and he was the former governor of New Mexico, so he had won as a Republican. 
he got 15% of the vote in New Hampshire, in New, in New Mexico without straight ticket voting. Uh, they actually had the, the Secretary of State tried to add straight ticket voting back this summer and it got thrown out by their state Supreme Court. Uh, New Hampshire, uh, the place with the uh, Liberty Larpers, Dakota. Yes. Uh, they uh-huh. have, they have, uh, it's obviously a relatively small state. They only have three or four electoral votes. Uh, but they have a, a general assembly or a legislature with 400 members. Okay, so their their races for state house are very close to what we have for a county council race in Henry County. Um, there's a guy named Brandon Finney who was elected in 2016 as a Republican, and he left the Republican Party, joined the Libertarians, and he uh, he had to run for reelection this cycle. It did not go as well as he had hoped. The Reason article in the headline states that he got slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I am, I'm going to pull this up one more time here. I had it ready, and then I, I switched off the screen. So I, I did a little analysis. I took his numbers and uh, tapped I think that's the wrong I, chat. I cl- yeah, it is the wrong chat. There, you have any idea how many group <laughs> chats I live in? <laughs> and then the day after the election, everybody messages I think you. I, th- I think you just uh, missed it. There you go. Not that one. I thought it was. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, we're looking. You guys carry on without me for a second. Okay. Anyway, this guy ends up losing <laughs> in the New Hampshire state and state house race, and uh, he he did get slaughtered. He his actual voting numbers and his percentage was less than what yeah. Jeremiah's race was. But what was really interesting, uh, I think, to a lot of us was that their state house race garnered less votes than our county council race. Here, here, here are the details. So Brandon Finney wound up with 10% of the vote. Uh, the The Democrat actually campaigned and worked. He got 42% of the vote, and the, there was a Republican <laughs> that just put out yard signs, and he got elected with 47%. Hmm. Uh, Sounds there were, familiar. There were only 30... Oh, now, in my race, listen, everybody worked hard. Everybody got to every I door. I wasn't talking and, about your race. I was, and everybody, yeah, I maybe, was dogging Greg Pence. Oh, <laughs> yeah. generic, <laughs> Old generic Pence. Uh, yeah, so there were 3,600 votes cast in Finney's state house race. Uh, there were 4,100 votes cast in the, in the District 1 race. So there, there were a whole lot more votes. There were 4,100 votes in District 1. There were 2,500 votes in District 2. Wow. Yeah, and 4,700 in District 3. So in, in 2016, there, were roughly, there was roughly the same amount of voters in District 1. But 2016, of course, was a presidential election. And voter turnout's always a lot higher. So it was on par with the presidential election, our midterm turnout was, Mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty impressive. However, uh, with that being said, the voter turnout was still only 52%. So, And that's of registered voters. Of the population of Henry County, it it was actually only 30 32 or 33% of people in the county came out to vote, 52% of registered voters. Yeah, those people who didn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> they should have which is, they, their car batteries ought to be dead tomorrow. <laughs> which I think maybe is they'll, a, maybe they'll have flat tires. You should go key their cars. Yes. I should. Chase. <laughs> but, I, <don't> <laughs> I think right. that's another thing that's plaguing our republic as well is low voter turnout. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think that just everybody needs to go out and vote. Because that is also a horrible decision. Yeah. If you're going to go out to vote just to vote, then stay home. Absolutely. If you didn't, if you don't know anything about the people that are running or about the issues, then then your vote doesn't carry weight, or at least it shouldn't, because it, you're you're making an uninformed decision that impacts not only you but everyone. So I think that which has always been the goal of this show is to is to try to inform people before they head to the polls. And I think that in the age of the internet and the amount of technology that we have now, it has never been easier to become an informed voter, mm-hmm. to just simply look without the lens of partisanship, without the lens of, oh, I'm so angry because the Democrats did this. National po- politics. Yeah, you just you just look at things. I think people, Read the newspaper, people for God's sake. People see the party and they think, you know, if, that, if this person's a Democrat, then I don't agree with them. But if, a if Democrat want, here yeah. is a conservative in, in California. California. Yeah, so yeah. If John you, Gregg would have been a, an I mean, alt-right. In just Jeremiah's race, <laughs> Jeremiah had tripartisan support for the area because not, people aren't that far apart. If you want candidates to continue to run and go through the effort that Pat Cronk did, that Ken and Gray did, that I did, 
then the voters owe it to the, to them to, to look past just the tribalism yeah. and to actually run. Or else you're going to end up with more races where you have one candidate for county clerk, one candidate for county commissioner, yep. one candidate for sheriff, one candidate for recorder, one for auditor. And nobody's going to try. Because it's a whole lot of work to raise that money, to do the work, to go through the effort, and then 40% of the vote goes to one can- one party. Yep. Yeah, Brad Brewer is in the uh, live chat right now, and he said one quarter of our population shouldn't be deciding the results for everyone, which is absolutely correct. Here in Henry County, with 52% of registered voter turnout and with you know 50%, let's say, for a two-way race to win, that's one quarter of the population that is deciding the person who's going to make decisions to impact everyone's life. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's not how a representative democracy is supposed to work. All right, so we're going to leave that portion. We'll, we'll transition out, but that will probably be in the wall daily. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but you probably were just heard by, I don't know, 20 times the audience that you normally are on the Boss Hog, because we're going to put that in the We Are Libertarians nice. daily Nice, I'm feed. going big places. You are go- <laughs> the whole world's going to know that Chase forgot to vote. At me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the that's the straight ticket voting portion, and that's that's going to be a big deal. And I expect our our people to be advocating for that. And I hope that uh, the the listeners here that that understand and pay attention uh, will will also pick up that mantle. Uh, but I, that's going to be one of my biggest biggest issues over the next couple of years. Um, I will say that we had a tremendous party here on uh, on Tuesday night. It was a great party. Okay, I didn't expect to be here as long, but there was really really good food. A lot of beer. Yep. Yeah, you know, the results weren't one. Now I it was a late night, and we had to send somebody out for more beer. But yeah. we, we did have more beer at the end. <laughs> we of the got night. to see Brantley Spicer streak downtown, which no one wanted to see. But now we can say we saw it. <laughs> uh, thankfully, there was no arrest. No, well, we, Listen, had a, we, we haven't had, had a police. There's been Brantley, enough time between here and there. We can talk about it. <laughs> Brantley. <laughs> Brantley used to be a bit of an athlete. He was a trained killer for the United States. He was military American hero Brantley Spicer. There were scars everywhere. <laughs> it was turning me on a little bit. An American soldier, <laughs> an American. So, uh, yeah, we, we we had a big party on 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 Tuesday night, and and you know, as as we take stock and you look back and you say, okay, yeah, we got twelve percent of the vote. Well, we the average libertarian in a three way race got about three percent. So we made huge progress. Our party and the growth we've had, and Dakota's leadership, and and the the people who have come before us. Um, <laughs> Brant is defending himself <laughs> in the chat. These guys have worked really hard, and they've, they've done a lot was, to grow. I think that Brantley was talking about my singing. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. we is, is it an important call, Chase? Yeah, it's my dad. Oh, you want to take it live? <laughs> no, you want a speakerphone? I'm, I'm solid. Does he know you're on the radio? Please do I it. I don't think he knows I'm Please on the radio. Please do it. Does he know you have a radio show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows I'm on. This could be an audition for Tradio. I, I yelled at him because he was on the other side of the Doughboy debate. Uh-oh. I was like, Dad, do your research. You're being stupid. <laughs> and then I explained to him. He's like, okay, I, I understand <laughs> now, which I just think he said that, so I, I shut up, but... He knows I'm here. You talk about it a lot at home, the Doughboy. I did when it was a hot issue. Oh, okay. now you know I won, so I we'll, don't care. We'll, <laughs> we will. We will get back into that the Doughboy. That should have been a ballot You know. You know what I want to tell you. I I think 20 years from now you're gonna win. Great. When I'm a boomer, <laughs> you're gonna be in your 50s. But you know what? All the boomers are gonna be dead by then. <laughs> so I think you'll have a really good ch- chance. They're, they are already look like walking graveyards. Here's I've the seen thing. a bunch of them. And no one takes you seriously in politics until you get, until you're either... Until you get to be Chad Malico's age. He's finally old enough to win. Yes. He's 40. Until you, yeah. I'm a man. Exactly. I'm 40. You, su- you surpass that threshold and you start having to have surgeries because your body's breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> because oh. Chad just had shoulder surgery. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funnier was, when you explain it. I was trying to explain the joke. <laughs> Did right. everyone get it? <laughs> yes, it was awesome. <laughs> You're so funny. Chad says, I'm not that old. But no, seriously, a lot of the older people in this county are Republicans. And then they're going to vote Republican until they die. So you got about 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here, here's the point. I looked around this party and it was big. Daryl Radford was here with the courier and he said, look, you guys have got more people here than the, Repub- than the Democrats do because he was covering both parties. I'm like, I know. And look around. These are th- we have young people. We've actually attracted a lot yeah. of young people. Um, it, we had, you know, we had we had cool. We didn't just have like Bush Light or, mm-hmm. or Budweiser. We had like, you know, IPAs. IPAs. It was very hipster. But seriously, I mean, <laughs> the Libertarian <laughs> Party, I, I think, has a bright future. A lot of a lot of the young people I know 
aren't just voting for one party. So the the point of this though is that we've grown. So in yeah. 20, 2012, it was it, it we're probably five times bigger, six times bigger. The people that are volunteering and working versus my twenty twelve race where I ran for state rep. Um, every cycle that you run candidates and people come along, it grows. So no, yes, we got to twelve percent and that was big, but it also brought along Cade. This was Cade's first cycle that he's been here. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the first time for Garrett Barnes to be here, for Stephen Vitito, uh, for John Phillips being a part of this, for the Pierces. Matt and Brandy Pierce were here at the we've, party. We've grown we've, by six or seven members. Right. Not just the people who are helping out, but actual members but, in two years. You know, when, when you have good qualified candidates, they attract their friends and they come along and, and then you build the party. So, you know, it, when you're starting a third party and developing a third party in an area, it's like starting a religion. It really is. Mm-hmm. And, and it takes passionate volunteers and people that believe in the message, uh, and it takes cycles. And every cycle that goes along gets a little bit better and better and better and better. And certain mm-hmm. people die. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as, as Chase says, we're just a few key funerals away from yeah, taking over. a few key funerals. You know, <laughs> I say five years down the road, Jared, you will be up to 25%. Ooh. Maybe Ooh. 10 Man. And then further, just with this podcast, you know, talking to people and getting opinions out there and having people learn and understand more about local government, that's going to attract people to it as well. Yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah. I really, really do. Yeah. I, Cause, I mean, whether people like us or not, I feel like they get a lot of their media from us. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. So. I think we've informed a lot. You guys have informed a lot of people. I know I've learned a lot. Yeah. I had n- I knew and you've nothing. Taught, you've taught people so much. I have. I still run into people that I don't know, and they're like, "Hey, you're the you're the fake farmer." <laughs> so, but I, have, I, I mean, try, I enjoy try that going too. around town having so. billboards for two months. <laughs> Alexander Hi, Lott, and he's he's saying that we need uh, some libertarian wine and wafers. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get custom wafers with the with the Liberty Chicken on it? I like it. We could. We could do anything. So. <laughs> So we are one year away from the next election. The municipal Correct. election is next. Uh, so we got three years in a row of elections. We I'm, just had this one. We got one next year and the one the one year after. Right. Uh, so at this point, Dakota has taken over the uh, the candidate recruitment and coordination. So between it, now and about yep. February, your goal is to have a full slate of city of Newcastle. I know, I know that everyone's. I know what everyone's thinking. We just got out of twenty eighteen midterm elections. Uh, let's just have a breather. No breathers. No breaks. Get your boots on. Can Let's we, get going. Can we get rid of the commercials, though? No, we're gonna. It's the, gonna be the Libertarian Party having commercials this time, buddy. Okay, we're gonna be slamming attack ads, slinging attack hey, ads. To I had a, I had radio show commercials. There's some there's some city councilman in Ward Four that we're gonna be just dogging on him constantly with our candidate. All right, listen, him. I heard that guy's. <laughs> I heard that guy's kind of in a homeless situation right now, where he sold his house and he's just wandering the yeah, streets. Yeah, well, welcome to the club, Aaron. <laughs> Dakota, how's your home life? Going great. You've got a you got a place to live. You got a roof over your head. Yeah, I got a fence now too. I found that uh, if you're why why is your mom still watching your dog if you got a fence? Are you just just <laughs> trying to cut just out got, on babysitting? It just got finished yesterday. That's why. And I had a show tonight, so they couldn't come over. But anyway, I found that if you're suffering from post election uh, traumatic stress disorder, then building a fence, a privacy fence with eight foot panels by yourself really helps take your mind off of it. I thought and you had it, people for that. And it really helps you put your mind onto the the sore back that you have. Yeah. You poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to get away from your wife. You're, 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 I bet you're going to go She's all Clark Griswold this year and Audrey put up Christmas been, lights just to stay away. Audrey has been working her butt off, been putting in like 11, 12-hour days. She uh-huh. looked tired at the party the other night. Yeah. I mean, she came directly from work. Yeah, she looked yeah. pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. That was the first thing that Lisa Crosby told me whenever I walked in. Wow, you look really tired. <laughs> Wait until you have kids. <laughs> you have an announcement to make? Yeah. No Wait until you have yeah. more than one kid. It's like you're drowning and then somebody hands you another baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, uh, well, you know, we're... So that's that's coming. Uh, I'm I'm excited. I, I am excited about where it's at. Obviously, sitting, you know, uh, listen. I was not planning on getting my election results live on the air, but I uh, we yeah. suffered through it together. I was I was wondering how you were going to take it because it was either going to be really good or really bad. And I was stay, wondering what. Stay strong, buddy. It's okay. I was wondering what face you were going to make. I was hoping it wouldn't turn into a meme <laughs> like you were just going to like start tearing up a little bit, and it was just <laughs> that would have been really bad. You handled it really well. It was just raining on his face. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> we have some pipe problems here, so it yeah. just it, it seeps out a little bit. Condensation from the rain. There's something in my eye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've yet to cry on the air. I really wish that we had our, our little thing that uh, plugged into the computer because I was referencing Flight of the Concord songs <laughs> that entire time, and no one's going to get them but me. <sighs> it's a sad life I live. All right. Local news. You want to get to local news right now? Uh, we can. I, it's, a, it's a matter of what you want to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all. I mean, I mean listen, we'll, let's just lay it out there. Cade was very late. Yeah, Kate and, was, uh, and that's why we and started dinners this. dinners yep. ready at home. Sarah already messaged me said that I've got I've got and dinner waiting. To be honest, this week's kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it did not suck. I've we, got a lot going on in my life right now, guys. Like engagement photos or what? No, <laughs> because yeah, Chase is moving. <laughs> uh, Chase is moving. He's moving into the apartment upstairs, and we're running him for mayor in 2019. So yeah, vote for me. He's really been. Can trying I put, to, Can I put you down? For sure, man. I'm I'm a solid win. That's all I've ever done in my life is win. So keep winning. I'm just gonna keep winning. All right. Can you see. can you make one of your platforms getting uh, getting new voting machines that don't that don't? Did you say 2020? 20, no, 2019. Next year, and and maybe and maybe you use your power as the new mayor to to crush the the election office and and get get the machines reprogrammed yep. so that I they don't have automatically. The same Jared, machines Jared, just for you. Too. I'm going to put so many wind farms all across this county. <laughs> <laughs> is that so in your many. power? Yeah. Are you going to use city budget well, money to build a lot them? Of, a lot of people think it is. So apparently you, know that, if you, get um, you know that it, on 14th Street here, which is part of our local news, 14th Street is closed again. It's closed because they just pulled the permits, I guess, so that in the 1400 plaza, they could erect a 600-foot tall windmill. Uh-oh. I thought they were going to put a statue out there. Maybe the Doughboy was going to go on 14th Street. No, it's a windmill. Oh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. It's got it's a windmill and we're running an experiment with live animals out there as well. <laughs> and seeing and we're gonna put impregnated cows and pigs and to see how many of them come out mutated from the windmill. <laughs> I hope the groundwater's okay. <laughs> oh I man. Hope they still feed you got out. pork loin and mac and cheese waiting for you, Jer. Man, we gotta go. I'm gonna come over, Sarah. <laughs> come on over, Chase. I got only Chinese been live for on. like half an hour. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. What are we doing next week? Let's have a show. Let's have a show planning session. What are we doing next week? Do we have any plan at all? I don't have any plans for next week. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Are we doing a show next week? Yeah, we're doing a show we next week. We owe it to the people. Um, here's what we're doing next week. I got it all planned out already. Aaron Dickon and Darren Jacobs are both going to come on. Okay. It's going to be a, a four-person show. Do they know? Yeah. Yeah, they know. As of right now, because they just heard <laughs> me say it. Aaron, Aaron probably watches live. Uh, what happens with uh, the the county clerk just got tagged? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Um, Aaron Aaron probably is watching live. Darren doesn't watch live, but he comes back immediately after and watches so that nobody can actually tag him in the comments. <laughs> the, nice. I think he has a sock account he uses to watch us. Oh. Uh, my brother says uh, the new Doughboy causes cancer. FYI. It's hmm. the same Doughboy. It's just been rehabbed. Okay, hold on. Uh, the local it's news. It's just the location. It's just oh. not Next falling week. apart anymore, and people can see it. Next week, yeah. Next week's show, uh, we're having Darren Jacobs and Aaron Dickin both on, and we're going to be talking uh, city elections. What What is coming up for election uh, if Aaron Dickin is going to be running again? So be waiting for him to make that announcement. Uh, live on the show. We're going to have it here first. Now, Aaron, Aaron did stop by our party. The other night? He did, and he got his and, picture taken by the media. And the media was here, his picture was taken, and people were immediately going, what are you doing? Are you, are you picking sides? Are you, choosing, are you choosing the libertarians? He did. Is, someone, is there a rumor? Someone screenshotted it and sent it to him in a text message. <laughs> screenshots <laughs> are wrong. <laughs> who screenshots things? I, who does that now? Yeah. That, I think that was outlawed after this election. <laughs> because the council you, doesn't listen, have that power. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you put on the internet, if you delete it, it's gone. That's Nobody else sure. gets to keep it. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I, I heard so, too. At least. That's the way it's supposed to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anthony Weiner learned that too. <laughs> <laughs> Weiner. <laughs> All right, so what about this Doughboy? What's going on with it? All right, so the Doughboy statue, we got the first picture of it in its new location. Uh, they, uh, the monument company was there today. So, Cade, I guess you were just driving by? Yeah, I was heading into town from the farm um, to get a new hydraulic hose made. Nobody cares why. Oh, that sucks. And uh, I drove by, and I was like, man, something majestic in the distance. You caught a gleam. And I got close, and I saw the flags, and I was like, oh, look at all those flags. And I got closer, and I was like, oh, the Doughboy's up. So, so it I, was I moved, over. right? 
It was installed. It's been it it's been installed. It's been moved. It's been installed in its new location. It's been installed it's been and been mounted. Moved. Yes. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> I told you guys I was going to get it moved, and I got it moved. So <laughs> I'm taking full credit for that. So the Doughboy was installed in the new location, and and <laughs> they Cade snapped like the Zabruder from. Photo. I might have spoiled it because I didn't even think about that they were, might cover it. So and keep it a surprise. In July, when the cannon was restored and yeah. put back, it was put under cover for like a week before their big unveiling. Cade has the perfect timing and takes the picture and posts it himself. And I'm like, oh, I want, I'm, I'm going to be total click whore. And I saved your picture. I, I had shared yours immediately. Yeah, yeah. And then I deleted by share. I'm like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. We are going to do this for the show. Yeah. And, I, and fully knowing, fully knowing that it's going to turn into uh, a little bit of a viral Henry County deal. Because uh, we've covered this story since a very, a very, tip of the of the trauma iceberg yes this uh, was the first time i had ever seen it really <laughs> it's probably true uh <laughs> the Cade kilger breaking news doughboy has already had a reach of 3300 people in about seven hours 1500 people have been engaged they've clicked on it they've liked it they've done something 1500 people in six hours <laughs> it's been incredible it's awesome uh so yeah, the doughboy got moved. I went after work because I thought I'm gonna get a better picture of it, like get right up on it, put my phone in portrait mode, get some nice pictures. Yep. And they already had it covered up. And there was a big group of people that were sitting that were standing around outside of it. I'm assuming that they were working on it. Did you just try to big time them and start taking the cover <laughs> off? <laughs> I just, hey, I'm, I'm local media. Media? Uh yeah. I I'm with the press, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Karate chop. <laughs> so for everyone freaking out, oh, we don't have a statue in the original place. I am going to put a Steve Alford statue there. A statue? Yeah. Well, <coughs> we'll see. So I, I know our friend Betsy, our dear friend Betsy, yes. who, by the way, visited us Betsy's on election night. Betsy's my girl. Betsy, we, everybody loves Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> Out of all the candidates we interviewed, Betsy was my, my favorite. What about the time you interviewed me? He wasn't like here for that. I didn't even vote for you. <laughs> You're a loser. He wasn't here for that. He bailed out, and I was uh, having to run everything by myself. That's true. Halloween night that uh, Trump came by and did tell me I was a loser. He was right. <laughs> uh, so Betsy came by here, but I, I know she's got a key. She's she's a, a high ranking Republican officer, and I know in their headquarters they've got a Trump cutout. That would be perfect. I could and, I could put Trump, and there. you could take the Trump cutout. <laughs> I'm pretty there. sure all the boomers would be okay with that too. They so. love him. Yeah, yeah, they do. I think they hate you. Your car's it probably either like been towed or trade. tires flattened. My like life's a- taken a, a pretty deep turn because <gasps> five years Time ago, out. all the Betsy boomers would love me. in the me. chat. I love you too, Chase Payton. <laughs> that means a lot. That just made my day. <laughs> you're crying now. Your your ears are tearing up. Your it's, ears it's are tearing. Your eyes are tearing. But she says uh, that you thought it was. Gonna you could be, be a really Miller. good actor. Your your eyes are actually watering. Reggie Miller. It's just because I've had my contacts in for like five days in a row. <laughs> uh huh. Betsy, it's about you. She Don't thought it would be Reggie know. Miller. You you talked Steve Alford. I listen. I am. I would rather have a Reggie Miller, a Steve Alford, or a Axl Rose. Mm, I like but that. <laughs> the people want Donald Trump, so. Yeah. I'll put I Donald do. Trump there. Can we you get know, a cardboard? I already got cutout? what I wanted, so I'm happy. I think I'd rather have a cardboard cutout there of Mayor Greg York. Okay. I wonder how much it costs to have a cardboard cutout made. I don't know. If it doesn't cost that much, I'm just gonna make one of myself and put it there. That'd be pretty cool. If you're watching and you make cardboard cutouts, <laughs> get a hold of us. We'd all like one <laughs> of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, we would totally decorate this cell, this place with big heads of our own faces. Well, Mike, we should Mike, just get a bunch of fat heads and put them on the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mike and Mike and Scott were talking about on the outside of our building um, a mural. Yes, they were going to put a and, mural. Uh, and, and we I know s- that new county commissioner Ed Tarantino makes murals. He does. Yeah, perfect. And I, my idea was I, I really wanted, since I'm the county chairman here, I wanted my, my head on the side, Vladimir Lenin style with the starburst <laughs> coming out, side profile. I thought it would be awesome. But uh, that idea got shot down. I don't know why. Uh, I've been told by a source that the Career Center can make massive prints. Nice. Ooh. And I think we probably could get them put on some poster bart. Do you have to serve in the military to be on a statue in Memorial Park? Well, I guess we could do a Brent Spicer statue. 
The one he's, of him streaking? He's not from this county. <laughs> there we can, can be like a little kind of leaf. Oh, you can't have any outsiders? Is that no. problem? <laughs> we can have Scott Fleener. Scott Fleener would make a pretty good go. statue. So I, he's got a cool. I've scar. been sending. Uh, I, this is. I've, I'm such he an does. advocate for Henry County. I love this place. I live here on purpose. It was the thing I said in the campaign all the time. Um, I've been sending Brant Realtor.com listings for Henry County, mm-hmm. trying to talk him into <laughs> moving here. So it's the Free County Project, man. You know you want to do it. So we just have to. I the Free County Project. The Free yeah. County Project. We just got get Sarah in touch to with John. Here. Yeah, that's right. We need to have him get in contact with John Kindred, the official realtor for Boss Hog Liberty. <laughs> Uh, we need to plug him. Why didn't you use him for your house sale? I because my house wasn't for sale. <laughs> <laughs> All you did is mention it on this show, and it was gone. That's right. We have such incredible reach here. <laughs> Very thankful for it. So, so Chase, you're gonna are you gonna attend the statue unveiling on Sunday if as I, as the Boss Hog Liberty I'm correspondent? Not hunting, I will be there. You gotta be hunting for a statue, right? I, Hoping to be hunting for a deer. Well, how about you just kill the deer on Saturday, and then we'll help you gut it Saturday afternoon. I would, I would love to, to get kill it the out deer of the way, Saturday. and then just be done. I'm, I'm. I hope I I go in the woods for ten minutes, shoot a deer, and leave. It's cold. It's going to be cold. I've already sat in the woods a, a couple days anyway, so I've got the whole time to myself. Where are you going to be? Um, down down in Bloomington, probably. Ooh, that's a long there. way to drive to deer. Hunt. Are you allowed? Yeah, are you allowed to uh, have a gun in Monroe County? Saturday it's pretty liberal. And Sunday. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I'm just go not in the on campus. Before we get all this not snow. on campus. I think I'm gonna go in the morning. Maybe Saturday morning too. Yeah, it's about that time. Don't It'll you have good. to harvest some beans? Uh, we got all our beans done tonight. Really? Yeah, our double crops. We finished those tonight. Um, we've got about a little over 400 acres of corn to go. So, so I was. I have a question related to agriculture. Um, where I've been working in Middletown for the past week, um, there is still a bean field that I'm assuming is probably about 80 acres mm-hmm. surrounded by woods. Uh, why would why would they keep that in there this late? Is it just haven't got to just it yet? To probably haven't got to it. It could be double crop beans. Um, like mm. we when we um, harvest our wheat in the summer, we plant beans in the wheat stubble. That's normally right around Fourth of July. Oh, okay. Um, that way you can get two crops off the same acre of land. Um, and yeah, that, but that's what we but, just got But don't done you cutting. double up the carbon footprint? I thought you liked this planet. Yeah, well, we, we have all these fancy we have machines DEF. now that have, uh, that have emission systems that eat fuel and, <laughs> and they uh, come in card- DEF systems. It comes in cardboard boxes and single-use plastic. Single-use plastic containers, yeah. So do we you, do our part, trust me. Do you run your tractors on bean fuel, on bean, on biodiesel? Um. Yes. The some of the fuel that we do buy is biodiesel. Oh. Okay. But not all I, of it. Don't you want to support agriculture? Well, it, d- it depends. Yeah. Well, why don't they d- use ethanol? <laughs> well, <laughs> and all your gas that you buy there is ethanol. Yeah. Well, soon to be more. It looks like. Uh. Yeah. So uh, we need to there's get gonna be another ethanol plant this. built in uh, Shelby County. Yeah, by I the saw way, saw that new poet. Po- poet. Yeah. Gonna be the fifth, fifth one. one. Yeah. yeah. But Henry County missed out on all that action. Yeah. 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 <sighs> what would you like to have here come here, Chase? What? Henry County. What kind of industry? Well, I think we need a couple more gas stations. Maybe mm-hmm. truck stops? Maybe churches? truck stops. Uh, a couple more churches. Um, maybe a couple more pizza places. Pizza places. Yeah. I kind of wish that we'd gone like another 10 or 15 minutes because John Montgomery Ooh. was ready to buy us some pizza and bring it I down. I think yeah, we, we should just tear down <laughs> the entire downtown buildings. You know why? Because I like this building. Why do you want it tore down? Hold on. Not this one. I mean, right on right on the main strip. We're we on are main on strip. the main well, strip. I, we Have are you on looked the main out that strip, window? We're on the back part, you know. But what I'm saying is, we're the very first building. I've been I've been wanting to talk about this on the show for a minute, and now I got (laughs) my my chance. You got your opportunity. I am so sick of the cruise. Wait, (laughs) (laughs) it is so annoying. Okay, I realize that was the cool thing to do in the '90s and the '80s, maybe before that. I don't know. And was it a thing in the '90s? Yeah, Yeah, I I know my parents did it. Okay, time out. I hate you because I did it too, and I'm not as old as your parents. Wow, you're close. almost shut sure. up. <laughs> <laughs> when like, I was when you're I like was four a boy, years away, Jer. When I was a boy, uh, I, I'm going to say this is like 98, 99. 
Dakotas and diapers, but we yeah. drive Broad Street and it would take for you coming up the hill, it would take you every bit of twenty minutes to go from this stoplight where our building is at here at eleventh yeah. Street to to Barton Tire or, or the other side of the railroad tracks. Well, I can remember when they brought it back a few years ago for the, the first cruising. time in a while, the cruising. And that no, was really not, don't say it like you're Hoosier. Cruise in. The the cruising. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways, they brought it back. That was really cool. It was, my parents went out to it. It was cool. Do it once a year. Don't do it once a month. Danny says he summer. did it from 2000 to 2005. <sighs> Danny's old, too. <laughs> and Danny, if you want to go hunting, gray hair. you can why go hunting just, with me and you can sit on my lap. Why don't I we just do it Friday night? Friday night, we'll all get our vehicles and we will just drive at like a two, at two miles an hour up and down Broad Street and start cruising. Roll the windows I just, down. I need a notice. Someone leave a letter at my house or something, text me, and tell me when it's going to be. That way I can take it's a different It's on Facebook? Because I take, I take 38 to get to my house It's every in the day. newspaper, dude. Yeah. I don't read the newspaper. It's a whole thing. There's a Facebook event every time. Do we need a poll? Chase is an uninformed voter. Do we need to conduct I, a poll before we do anything. That's of why I didn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just saying that it, it irks me. Every okay, time I get thing, stuck dude. on Broad Street. Here's the thing, dude. For the libertarians... The the Broad Street cruising has been a great source of outreach. Jamie Owens, Rachel Valor, and Lisa Crosby did a great job. Protectionist Dakota over here holding yes. this stuff. <laughs> they did a great job fundraising for us at the cruise in, and they did a great job reaching thousands of people with our message. I'm not saying never do it. I'm just saying do it once at the most twice a year. It's not as special when you're doing it every month. I got stuck in there like three I disagree. times this year. We can settle like this... This like men outside later with a round of fisticuffs. You're turning me on right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow, I've heard, I've not heard him this passionate since the Doughboy. <laughs> okay, all right. What's next? You done? I'm done. I'm done with that. Are you finally <laughs> done? I, I've got everything out. I wanted to get out. What'd you do with your t-shirt? I thought you were gonna wear your your wind your wind farms are cool t-shirt. I couldn't find it. It's somewhere. <laughs> my grandma probably threw it away. <laughs> it's somewhere in my closet. She I will wear it laundry. again, though. You know she did would, your laundry and it you says know Boomer sucks. <laughs> and she goes, oh, no. Chase, you suck. <laughs> you know what would keep her from, uh, from throwing your stuff away? What? You rented the apartment here. I know. Mike Broyles, he, he'll, he'll make you a deal, man. Plus, she dries everything, so half my shirts shrink. No, Stupid. you're getting fat. Shut Stupid up. Stupid grandma. Shut Stop up. doing my laundry. <laughs> Idiot. Chase is getting round. Oh, gosh. Doughy Chase. That's why he wouldn't swim in my pool at the end of the year. He's ashamed. I swam, I swam with you every time. Dakota's the one that <laughs> wouldn't swim with you. <laughs> I got in the pool once. That's it. Mike is saying no. I don't think he wants you. I don't think... Ma- I probably, maybe, did Mike I, do a credit check on you and he's saying no? I probably pissed him off. Too. Mike is like seriously in the chat going, absolutely not. Dakota, uh, Dakota's fine. Chase, absolutely not. <laughs> Chase cannot have this building. I pay my bills, Mike. I've never missed a payment. On what? Your truck? I've got a bunch of bills. <laughs> How could you have bills? I've got three credit cards, Jer. <laughs> three. <laughs> three credit cards. He's holding up four fingers. <laughs> I've got another one coming. <laughs> I have one credit card. I've got school bills, too. What oh, degree yeah, did you I've get? got a phone bill. I've got a truck payment. I don't pay rent now, but I have paid rent in the past. I'm taking care of boomers. That's why I hate him so much. <laughs> He's almost an adult. You're so, yeah. close. You're I, so close. I don't want to be. Mike <sighs> says you live with your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma lives with me, Mike. Uh, he lives with his grandma, and he needs an apartment. And the one guy that might be able to get you an apartment in this town says, no, you live with your grandma. <laughs> it's not Stay his there. grandma. It's his roommate. <laughs> and someone Listen. liked it. <laughs> I will live with my grandma until I get married. <laughs> and we know that's not happening forever. Um every time maxing out another credit card on an engagement ring, Chase Payton. That's the chat. Uh, <laughs> Two every, people every time, have liked Mike's comment. Every <laughs> single time I, I look open up Instagram, it's always Katie Katie, Miss Katie, and she's taking another picture with a young lady who just got engaged. And I It's I, getting bad. She's gonna, every go, she's time. gonna catch all these bouquets. No, it's it's getting bad, boys. It's it's a picture. I need to stop saying it's never gonna happen. What's this too, picture? Then she it's gets Chase attending at another I, wedding. I didn't know she posted that one. I got stuck. <laughs> taking it's a very that cute picture. <laughs> it's it's not a very a cute, cute picture there. of Chase kissing this girl. I was forced yeah. to take a picture like that. Her friend was like, ooh, kiss her on the cheek. And I just wanted to smack her right on the face, but I couldn't reach her. She was too fast. 
<sighs> it's going to happen one day. Uh, we are coming up on a very important day in Dakota's life later this month. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got effed up that night. It was a good night. It was a good night. It was a great night. My one year anniversary is coming in 10 days. You'll no longer be a newlywed. Is that, is it, is I think one that's year? it. I think it's over at that point. Yeah, we don't have a wedding, a frozen wedding cake to uh, take a bite out of like you're supposed <laughs> to do on your one year anniversary. You know, part of mine, it's taking up a lot of room in my freezer right now. <laughs> Where'd you get it from? Uh, Marita Burton made mine. Nope. Not the same place. Can't do it. Not the same. I didn't get to try a piece of my wedding cake. I don't eat cake, and I had a touch of mine, just a, just enough to say that. It I looked some. delicious. I got it smeared on my face. I didn't get to try it. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, a year ago we were we attended Chase's bachelor party in Nashville. That wasn't my but um, well, it, it should be Chase's. It was Dakota's. Chase was there. I was there. Cousin Rick was there. Uh oh, you just made your wife mad. <laughs> He's. She's screaming at me. She got the boomer you know lock what, on. Jeremy? She's got the boomer lock on. <laughs> you know what, Jeremiah? <laughs> Don't offer our cake, Jeremiah. Well. <laughs> Dinner is no longer ready. <laughs> you can stay in the apartment upstairs. I got to live in the car tonight. <laughs> uh, Libby says you get two years. Libby Potter says you get two years. Mm. Um, wow. So I've learned a lot. Uh, apparently, I'm a newly wed for another year and a half or year and three quarters. But seriously, Chase. That just means when, you can still have sex, Jerry. When <laughs> After that, it's over. So just <laughs> enjoy it now. When when are we going to have your bachelor party? I Listen, I like to plan months in advance, so I'd like to block it out. In I'd March, I'm going to go to Florida. Don't years. give it out. What if Katie watches the show? <laughs> she doesn't listen this Can far. you plan yeah. around yeah, no, planting she, in harvest season? <laughs> she gives it a good 10-minute listen. I'd yeah, say, don't, don't do it to harvest season and screw I'd up say Kate. two years from now. What? Two years. Five, not waiting years. that long. A year and a half at at the very least. A year and a half puts us... I mean, we got to plan it around the election cycle, too. A year and a half puts us at, like, September 2020. Jerry, you worked hard on this one, and you got 12%. Yeah, imagine how much more we, we get. A, I think we can afford one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, if you're on the ballot in 2020, I don't know if we can take a weekend away from you. I'll, I'll chance it. I mean, I don't care. I don't care if I win. I know I'm going to win. All you do so, is win. That's all I do is win. Baby. All right. So I think we need to have a, a I'll bachelor build the, party I'll trip. build the freaking wall for the boomers. We need to have a bachelor party trip for Cade this spring coming up. Yeah, and then Cade didn't get a bachelor party. Because Cade yeah. didn't get one. And, and then, then Danny. And then me. <laughs> Hody Johns. Watching the podcast with his girlfriend. Look at Hody bragging about having a girlfriend. She's super upset to find out Dakota is married. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, well... I mean, it's a first marriage. It's a starter marriage for Dakota. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know if Audrey's going to get tired of him or not. Uh, yeah, very true. I didn't think they'd make it this far. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that I was Audrey's on their. Not... I, I was on their first date, and I was like, I don't know if this is going to work <laughs> out. I was on Team Audrey from the beginning. Dakota just came into my life. Here, here's the thing. If I was a if friend Audrey of Audrey and before. I ever separate, I know that everyone's going to take Audrey's side, and I'm just not going to have any friends left. And you'll be homeless. I'll just have Daisy, my dog. If you think she, you think she's gonna let you keep the dog, she'd let me have Daisy. I think she'd probably make you keep Hank instead. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd take her to court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are. I think we're about a year away from having a good dog. My 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 Aussie. We we got the brothers who just had a birthday, uh, and unfortunately, we had to have the birthday separate because you were busy remodeling your house and I was running for office. Um, I think we're about a year away from having some good pups. Yeah. Uh, there there are little windows that it's okay. Hank's not that bad. Hank, here's the thing about dogs. You have to let them extend extreme amounts of energy. You have to let them um, pee on the rug occasionally. Oh, we're no. done. We're past that. We don't have that Way problem past anymore. that. But it, dogs need to extend a, a lot of energy. Um, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> You would be surprised how it's been split. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, my so my the, much older brother Danny with his gray hair. <laughs> so, like I said, dogs have to extend a lot, expend a lot of energy, mm -hmm. especially whenever they're at the one year stage or so. And then, like Daisy, our German Shepherd, uh, around two years old, she really calmed down, and you know she she knows when it's time to play, and she knows when it's time to just hang out. Hank 
However, there's something about Australian Shepherds. They are wild. And he is over a year old. He's pit- I've been pissed on by both dogs. <laughs> yes. There was, he uh, does like to claim people. Chase, Chase came to the Super Bowl at my house. Well, no, or it a, was a, a, a football game. It was that game. It, it might have been the Super Bowl. It was the day we saw Newcastle play. Yeah, we watched Newcastle play in the sectionals. Yeah, and then uh, my my puppy jumped on Chase, pissed all over my all leg. over him, <laughs> and then I uh, I we laundered your clothes for you. And and, and, and you if left you know it. me, I can't resist petting a dog. So I'm gonna pet that dog for a good hour or two, and he just pissed all over <laughs> me. It, I mean, I didn't stand a chance. Yeah, the Australian Shepherds, they don't settle down like that. Fortunately, at the new house, we have a big yard. Uh, we have a doggy door ordered by Lowe's, a screen door with a doggy door in it, coming from Lowe's. Very exciting. Yeah. So, we so have they're going to be in and out of the house all we're the gonna, time. Yes, we're going to have a system all day long. They can go out there and do whatever they want. Living in the county, it's much easier because you don't have to worry about them running around and barking at people in the backyard as they walk around. The only thing you have to worry about is squirrels. And Squirrel. Once the crossbow is sighted in, I can take I was those say, down you and silent I, but deadly. <laughs> you and I need to plan our squirrel hunting You can borrow trip. my suppressor. Oh, good idea. Now, nah, neighbors are still too close. Duke Falk right behind me I don't think would appreciate it on the other side of the <laughs> woods. The best way to squirrel <laughs> hunt is to go in deer season and just sit in a tree stand because I see about 30 yeah. squirrels a day. Yeah. Whenever you're deer hunting, you never yeah. see deer. When, when are you going to take Squirrels are deer hunting you. Too. You only have your uh, bow. <laughs> I still kill him. I'll take you someday. <laughs> I'll, I'll take, take you someday, someday Jeremy, just for it. <laughs> right excited. to the eye. The me broad too. head is the it's size re- of their head. You're going to yeah. hate it. <laughs> Can I bring my phone charger? Oh, I get on my phone. There was one time I was on my phone, and I stood up because I had been sitting there for hours. I was like 14, and a deer came up. I, I, went, I grabbed my gun. And I had to stand on one leg in my tree stand for like 10 seconds as this thing just stared at me. It was really young, and it just walked away. I could have shot it, but it was really small. They taste the best. What a story. Yeah, they do. That was riveting. (laughs) One of the guys did shoot it. It was the same deer. I felt really bad for it. Why did you feel bad? You were going to kill it. I wasn't going to kill it. It was really tiny. I let it go. I Mm. had the chance. It was a stupid deer. It wasn't going to live long. Yeah. All right. Final (laughs) thoughts? Sorry, Cade. do Do we feel like we're about done? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. I Here's got, the thing. I'm, I'm pissed at these people. I've got nothing more to say. Here's the thing. I've got one more thing. We to say, have actually. we have gone through this election cycle, and we have provided the voters with with candidate interviews. We have provided basically forums live streamed to the internet. It takes a lot of work on our side to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Make sure that everyone is prepared, getting the candidate scheduled. Um, it's, yeah, it does definitely take a lot of work, and uh, we, ap- of course, appreciate everyone doing it, and we absolutely love doing it. At least I do. Oh, yeah. But um, it, Now, it has been a grind. Like, uh, my uh, oh, yeah. my day job, I've been, in January, the company I worked for was announced that they were being purchased by a competitor, and that was supposed to happen by June. It closed. The transaction happened on November 5th. The day before the election, yeah. Uh, so all it's of that, all of that insane. grind was happening, and the insanity was happening in the in the weeks before. So my sleep schedule has been nothing. Yeah. At the same time as we're doing the candidate series, Dakota decided he was going to sell his house and move into a house and remodel it. And you closed on the old house on t- Monday, November fifth. It was like yep. it was like the uh, the day. It was in a history, perfect storm. Like I, uh, the, the whatever date it was in 1955 for the uh, <laughs> for, for, for the DeLorean to go back. It was like November fifth, 20, 2018 was was like the day for this show. It all came to a perfect head at that moment. I almost missed a quarter of football just walking with you one day. I know you really you really you went through I, the campaign training close. and then you and I we, we walked, all sacrificed. We walked the whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, Katie even pitched in. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a lot of yeah. work doing the campaign <laughs> and doing the show. We had a great time and we enjoyed it. Yeah, but, but we are a little bit on the tired side. Yeah, and the point I'm the point I'm trying to make is if you listen to the first forty minutes of this and then you listen to the second half and you're like, why are these guys just telling random stories and talking with each other? It's because we we realized that after the election we needed to go through some things and just have basically like an, an old-fashioned show like we used to have. Totally unstructured, just four really good friends talking to each other, 
about stuff. Well, so. Are we really good friends? I well, I would like to think so. <laughs> I've seen you naked, Jer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't know I was there, but I've seen you. I, I, I feel like at some point I'm going to see Chase naked against my will. <laughs> yeah. and, he'll say, and he'll say, just to be fair. It happens to all of us. I'm glad no one wants to see me naked. <laughs> well, uh, not, Rebecca Baker is digging. Not gay digging. Chase over here. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Baker is digging Cade's, uh, Cade's tattoos and that huge arm. Uh, <laughs> Dan, I, I'm reading the chat and I don't you, want to you, anymore. You started that sentence. Let's finish it. <laughs> On that huge arm. And then Danny says, I thought I was. I don't even know what Danny thought he was doing. I don't know. Maybe Danny thought he was there. I don't, I, I don't understand. Hey, uh, Cade, do you have anything to say? Um, final thoughts, like you guys were saying. I'm, I'm just glad the this election cycle's over. I think everybody's kind of relieved that they don't have to really deal with any of the state-level campaign ads and stuff anymore. So as far as that goes... Um, Looking ahead to everything else we have coming up, um, staying involved, trying to keep people informed, and I'm I'm glad we're picking up a good fan base with this. So, all right, on to Chase. Yeah, I've got a couple things as usual. Okay, <laughs> first off, I, Jared, I I want to give you and everyone else who ran for for any position props because I know you worked really hard on it. This is really tough on people, and politics kind of sucks especially local politics, because a lot of people don't care about local politics. Rex Bell said the other day, campaigning is a lot of fun, but elections are terrible. Yeah, yeah. no, the whole process kind of sucks. But you put in a lot of effort and props to you, even though you lost. You're our loser. You're welcome. And I'm, <laughs> I said I was going to disown you, but I, I'm not, Jerry. You're, you're my favorite politician. Not even Betsy? Oh, you're my second favorite politician. <laughs> Sorry, I, Forget, forget about Betsy. She's just so personable. I just, I don't even see her as a politician. So, anyways, number two is I passed a house on the way to work yesterday, and it had Christmas lights already up. How do you feel about people putting up Christmas decorations before Thanksgiving? I this think this a, is directed at Cade or myself. I think it's anybody, a smart move because either vehemently opposed. It's good weather. You are. Hanging lights. You, you are you Ve- at the type of person? Could you say happens? vehemently or vehemently? Vehemently. <laughs> Vehemently. Yes. Good God. What about you, Jer? I, I'm going to have the same opinion Kate is. I think it's fine to put them up now because the weather doesn't suck, but don't turn them on yet. Yeah. But if you're going to put the lights on, absolutely do it before the snow's on. coming down. No, nope. I, don't, I, would, I would flip the switch on, but I, I have no problem with them. I think, yeah, I think those as people, soon as I get another day off, I'm probably just going to hang mine and not. I'm going to be talking to Ed Tarantino pretty soon about making sure that there's some ordinance <laughs> drafted for the county. <laughs> yeah. Christmas light ordinance. Yes. There, I think there was, there's one in Carmel. There, there was a there was an ordinance in uh, I think North Carolina dealing with uh, Halloween candy and what you, and and the times and the dates and what and the specific candy you could give out. I wouldn't put it past Darren Jacobs to enforce holiday light ordinances. I Halloween think either. people who celebrate Christmas, who who put up the decorations and start listening to Chris, Christmas music before Thanksgiving, should go to the lowest level of hell possible because <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I've That's I've so annoying. I'll agree on the music part. I've long thought that in hell there is Christmas music playing constantly. Probably. And also a Christmas story playing. The only thing the only thing that is offered to eat are sweet pickles and cashews. I love cashews. I do too. (laughs) He does not like cashews. What kind of man is send me all the cashews? Cashews are disgusting. (laughs) They're the lowest of the the best nuts. (laughs) (laughs) One of the best nuts. So that's all I got. I hate people who celebrate Christmas too early. It gets on my nerves. We should be celebrating and I, I Christmas, like Christmas every day. What's I your just, favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. Yeah. So that's coming up. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Why, why, why is Thanksgiving your favorite holiday? Who's ball? Because for I like Christmas, don't get me wrong. But Thanksgiving, most likely you're not gonna spend it with all your family, but you're gonna spend it with some family. There's football and there's a lot of food. So it's the best parts of Christmas. Except you don't have to spend it with a, a bunch of people you don't really want to spend it with. It's, I don't know. There's you, don't just, any, you don't get any gift cards on Thanksgiving. Yeah, but you don't have to buy a bunch of gifts on Thanksgiving. You know what my favorite holiday is? Because you what? get to spend it with your friends. Uh, Speedway. Memorial Day yeah. at the track. Hmm. Me and Chase, Katie, Sarah. Dakota will buy tickets. We but witnessed then give someone away. throw up in the street multiple times. And it wasn't me. I wasn't. Jared. I didn't. I didn't do that. Until <laughs> it wasn't Nashville. Jared this time. <laughs> there was no Natty B's around. He couldn't do it there. 
Hattie B's. Hattie? Hey, boys. Hattie. My That's cousin right. lives in Nashville now, so we might have a place to stay. Let's go. Cheaper. We're, we, yeah, we next. really will be going this year. We talked about it whenever we were all toasted uh, at the last bachelor party that we were going to make it a yearly tradition. I brought it up to several of the people who went, and no one seems to remember except me, so I might have been dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's very possible. All right, final thoughts, Dakota. All right, let's see. My final thoughts are, of course, oh, we lost connection to the internet. We're still recording. Damn. There we go. My final thoughts are, uh, of course, thank you to everyone who came along during the uh, during the the uh, candidate series. It was a it was a great uh, great thing that I think that we did. Um, I really really enjoyed this candidate series uh, much more than the primaries. Uh, having the same interview over and over and over again got really tiring, uh, but this one was really good because it it, it was different every time. Uh, with the candidates being there together, talking about the issues together, and being able to see how the candidates react to opposition or opposition to their ideas uh, was, I think, very crucial to voters making their decision. Uh, Those that didn't just do straight ticket. Yeah. And uh, I hope that next year uh, we are we are able to get all of the candidates in the race on. Uh, but that would be up to you as the listener to help us keep building our credibility. So we said from the very beginning of this, uh, uh, the formation of this podcast, that we were hoping that this would become a respected platform uh, for politics across Henry County. And I think that we we are there uh, already, being very, res- very respected, but the way that we become better and keep gaining is by you sharing this podcast, sharing the podcast, sharing the live video, telling all of your friends and family about it, and uh, just helping get us the support that keeps this thing going so that we can reach the most people as possible, especially during election time. We will be working very, very hard during the municipal elections as well because those matter too, but uh, we'll be starting even earlier. Like Jeremiah said earlier, we had a lot of things going on in our personal lives that kept us uh, from being able to focus 100% on this. But, uh, you know, things are smoothing out now, so we can uh, we can start getting on that early. But, yep. uh, yeah, I mean, I just appreciate everyone. Um, if, you're, if you're a listener of the show, a regular listener of the show, and you want to help keep us alive, then go over to patreon.com slash Liberty. Uh, those people are going to get some bonus content here soon of me and Tanner Purdue uh, sitting down here at the mics at the election day party and talking. And uh, a big Patreon supporter, Brantley Spicer, the famous Brantley Spicer, he sat down with us as well. So if you're a fan of the show and you're a regular listener and you hear us talk about Brantley, then you get to hear his voice on there as well. So, yeah, just thank you, everyone, for uh, supporting us the way that you do. Um, I hope that we continue to gain the traction and gain the support that we have been. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to the interviews that, we'll, that we will be doing across the next year. And then, of course, the candidate series coming for the municipal elections. Jer, chunky or smooth peanut butter? Uh, a chunky if I can get it, but I'm sugar mm, free. Yeah. So all I can get right now is the regular blended peanut butter. Chunky really? doesn't have it. I have not found it. Oh, It wow. may exist, but I have not found it. That's horrible. Let's cut this part out. And we're going to invent it. <laughs> you do it you do it for me i'd love it i need to call those people at skippy get them on this yeah i don't buy the skippy it's like the the weird one that has oil in it there's, there's one the at Aldi pan, as well the peter pan one no it's it's uh this sugar-free life i live there's like two peanut butters in the, in the entire grocery store I can so have. we audrey's grandma loves almond butter yeah or she eats almond butter a lot we have a lot of almonds in my life i had so many nuts i had some almond butter for the first time and i think it's delicious uh but i don't drink milk i drink almond milk so I might be a little predisposed. I've, I'm disgusted. All right, I hate milk. Whatever. There's more for me. <laughs> Milk's good. You should buy milk and just throw I it away. Milk it helps, for it the supports the longest time, but the last five years, I've I've changed. I love milk now. All right, uh, we got to thank the the uh, sponsors that we had for the uh, for the election series, the Chapmans, uh, Big Bounce of Newcastle, uh, the Slick Pickle, and Wildlands Flowers. I think we do need to 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 get the Slick Pickle and rent it. And go for a hell of a ride. I really pickles, do too. booze, buses. 
I right. just realized what you're doing. That's pretty funny. <laughs> 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 only, a, yeah, I mean, it's only a couple hundred bucks to rent the Slick Pickle. We really need to do that for real. All right. So, yeah. You we, and Cade? Yep. You going to go? All right. I want to put a bounce house in the bus. Bring I, Knox. I, we'll show him a party. I, I'm, thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that the Slick Pick, we ride in the Slick Pickle presented by LK Farms because they have beef all year. Yeah. Long. Yep. All right. I don't know what next week is. It took everything we had to get through this election cycle, and normally I'm like freaked out, and we have stuff planned two, three, four weeks in advance. I don't know what next week is yet. We're gonna have some fun. Dakota says he's got it figured out, uh, but we will get. We we haven't missed a show. We won't miss a show, but uh, we will have amazing guests lined up. Uh, I've got some ideas, some things I've been kicking around. Now that we're through the uh, the election season, we can transition out of absolute extreme politics and and have some more fun art music. Yeah. Real life stuff. I'll look into that headless chicken and see if he's still alive. Yeah, check in on him. I think he'd be a really great guest. Mm-hmm. We will uh <laughs> we'll call it a wrap on episode eighty six now. Uh this has been Jeremiah Morrill, Dakota Davis, Chase Payton, Cade Coger. And uh next week we'll see who's here, but we'll have a show. Yep. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to wearelibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at wearelibertarians.com.